And your first storyteller of the afternoon, please welcome Brian. I want to be rich. I want to be a superstar. I want to be a celebrity. Said Brian Rios, never. What Brian Rios said was, I want to be happy, I want to help people, and I want to go to college. I want to work hard, study hard, and be somebody in life. There was a time where, when I got in trouble before a base, big baseball tournament because I was messing around in class. I was an integral part of my team, so I had to beg my aunt to take me, and she bought in. But in the car, she had a serious talk with me, which was, Brian, you need to start behaving because if you don't, you will end up working three jobs like me and barely paying the bills. This, cassette, this discussion was touching, and coming from her motivated me because I, I saw how hard she worked for me and my cousin as she had three jobs at the time, and she still cared for us and would do so much for us. This revealed to me that if I didn't get my act together, that me and my children would have the similar struggles as I had when I was younger. I said, Lillian, I'm going to do it to have a better future so one day I can tell you and my mom you don't have to work anymore. You can now relax and those 30 years of work paid off because I will graduate from college and then I will go follow my dreams. After that day, I behaved more, organized my life more effectively and improved my grades and as a result, my aunt was happy and she believed in me more. There was always this pressure about going to college and that I had to go to college, but I didn't understand what college was or how to get there. My mom would always push me and pressure me. She would say, Brian, are you done with your homework? Brian, do you, do you behave at, at school today? Brian, do you want a better life? The problem was that nobody in my family had gone to college, so I didn't have any guidance in the process. Even without any substantial mentorship, I knew I had it in me. I had always been able to adapt to different things, and getting into college is no different. I didn't have help from anybody, but I knew how to adapt to different things. What do I mean by this was when I was playing my second soccer season, I was on a new team where I knew one player. It was my first soccer season in the United States, and I wasn't very good. We had practices three times a week, and the entire time I would give it 100%. Some players would play because their dad was a coach or their dad knew the coach, but I didn't have a dad, and my mom would only go to the games. I earned my place on the team through hard work, and by the end of the season, I was one of the best players. Even if I was one of the best players, I couldn't do everything, and I fought out this in an important game. We were in the first game of playoffs, and we were losing, so I tried to put my team on the back, and I started shooting and shooting, but I couldn't score. I thought I could do everything, but I couldn't, and I learned the hard way. I was doing everything I could, but I just couldn't do it, so I decided to pass the ball finally, and my teammate scored, and we ended up winning the game. I knew that nothing would come easy, and I always had to give 120%, and if I didn't, stuff was going to be bad. Nothing has ever come easy to me, and I always have to do everything perfect for it to be good. I was born into a low-income family with a single mom. I have always shared a room with two to four people and a house with seven to eight. I was born in the United States to have a chance towards a greater future. Spending the time in Mexico for a while showed me the, educa the educational opportunities that they lacked. I saw the poverty and the struggles that they went through. The struggles that they went through were exceptionally more difficult than mine. When I was there, I had many friends on the street and their families were poor. Not objectively poor, but still very poor. And we would hang out after they came home from school. We would play soccer, work out, and just chill. Sometimes my mom would give me 20 pesos in the morning because she would be gone all day. And I would save them up until the afternoon when they came home so we could all go to the store. I would go to their houses and be like, hey, let's go to the store, I have money. They would run out of the houses and we would go to the store. They were never greedy and always grabbed just one thing. They would be super happy after that, and when my mom came home, they would always say thank you. They were nice, caring, and always took care of me, and I loved them. I knew in this moment that I had to do something with my life so in the future I could give back to the community that saw me grow up. I have always been seen as a role model to many people, so I always have to do the same thing. I was the next big thing, according to my family, so I had the pressure of everybody look at me at all times. 
Everybody would come to me when they needed something. They knew that I had something special. When I was around the age of nine, my mom decided that she made the decision that she was going to live and work in Tijuana. And I was staying in the United States with my aunt Lillian. Imagine a nine-year-old doing their laundry, making breakfast, and taking care of their seven-year-old cousin and my aunt's client, Paul, who suffers from brain problems. I would see my mom once a month or sometimes even longer as I played sports. My weekend would consist of getting up around 6 a.m. for mine and my cousin's games, taking a shower, making breakfast for four to, four, four to five people, which my favorite breakfast on weekends was spaghetti and bacon, <laughs> and then going to my games. After two to three games, it would be time for laundry and having fun. I was like a dad to my little cousin, Eddie. We did everything together, and we would always have fun and laugh. Of course, as kids, we were skated cats. When we went to sleep, I would say, Eddie, if you have to go to the bathroom at night, wake me up just to make sure everything's okay. He would answer, yeah, yeah, nothing will happen. But at nights, he would wake me up when he had to go to the bathroom or do anything else. Sometimes we couldn't sleep, and we would just lay in bed and talk, and those moments were unique. He would always tell me how he looks up to me and wants to be like me. I just kept going through school with the thought of college in the back of my mind. I would go to school to have friend, fun with my friends, but in class I would pay attention and do all my work. I knew that there were things that were important and that required to be put first, and that was school. But also, I could have fun outside of school, but in class I had to excel. I am the student who isn't the smartest, but is always raising their answers and answering the questions. Raising their hand and answering the questions. This is when I entered high school and I saw the seniors applying to colleges and I was like, do I have to do all this my senior year just to go to college? I would hear teachers say, college is getting harder and harder to get into, so you need to apply yourself. At this time, I still didn't know what college was, but I knew it was after high school and high school would help me get there. This is when I joined Reality Changers in my sophomore year <laughs> and it showed me the way. The motto, college changes everything, changed my life. It showed me the way to succeed and showed me the way to succeed and how to get there. The goal for everybody in the program was the same as mine, going to college. Being around people that have the same goal as me as well as people who have already achieved their goals motivated me to keep pushing no matter what. In my junior year, I was having a hard time in my AP classes, which I was taking three of. AP Physics, AP English Language, and AP US History. AP US History was my hardest class, but I was determined not to give up. I finished the first six weeks with a D, but instead of blaming it on the teacher like I would have earlier, I took the responsibility for my grade. I looked into the mirror and said, what am I doing wrong? This is my fault, nobody else's. What do I have to do to improve and have a better grade? I believed in myself, the people around me believed in me, and most of all, my teacher believed in me. I knew I could do it. I wanted to be successful, so I put my mind to it. I would put in extra work for history. That would be the first homework I would do when I got home. That would be the class I would study the whole weekend for, the class that I would stay up for, and the class I tried the most in. I even stopped going to soccer practice, which was one of the few things I looked forward to during the week just to improve my grades so I could go to college. There was sometimes when I wanted to give up because I was like, what am I doing this for? Why should I keep going? But that drive inside of me didn't let me quit, and the people around me kept pushing me. There was always a question in my head. If my mom can work 24 hours in a day, then why can't I do schoolwork for 15 hours max? I finished the semester with a C. It felt all right for the first semester in an AP class, and my teacher said my work had improved since the beginning of the year and was happy with all my work, and I was going to kill the second semester. I finished the first semester with a 3.5 GPA, which is all right for me. But this second semester, I am used to the workload, and I am at a 4.2 GPA. Thank you. Give it up for Brian.